Hey guys, here we are. So it's Fireside Chat Night and um, Matthew Greenwood here. So I've got a few people already on board. Kylie Greg, hey Kylie, and Kylie Beard. We've got two Kylies, Tanya and we've got Alison. Hey guys. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about uh, an extension of what we talked about last week, which is how to maintain your energy um, in these times that we're in. Um, so really important to be looking at uh, physical, mental, emotional and spiritual. But because of the changes that are going on now, we also need to look at the galactic side of us, the, the changes that are going on within us and, and vibrationally. So uh, that's what we get, where we're going tonight. And hello, Kathy, Josephine, Edith. Emma, hey Emma, Paulette, Mu, uh, Kerry, and who else we got? Cool, Jasmine, hey Jasmine. All right, so to start with, we're live on My Time TV, Matthew Greenwood Spiritual Journeys, and also inside Matthew Greenwood Group. So um, hopefully we'll have lots of numbers tonight. Hey, Marie and, and Trina. Hey, guys. Um, so please don't forget to tell your friends um, if you think they're going to be interested in what we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, please let them know. Give them a buzz. Uh, drop them a line. Do whatever you need to do, but get them on board because um, the more people that know about this stuff, the more balanced everyone's going to be. Um, also, uh, so when you drop me a line, when you give me a question or say hi, you're going to get the opportunity to um, get involved with the um, the grounding exercise that we're going to be doing in a little bit. But also, you're also going to be getting um, the opportunity to perhaps get a free spirit guide reading. So um, tonight's winner is Ali Parsons. So, hey, Ali, we're going to get a line to you. We're going to let you know that you've won um, a free spirit guide reading and then we'll just arrange time and uh, uh, it'll all happen. So um, as as with every week, we do this. So it's, it's just about letting people understand more about what's going on out there spiritually. And guides are one of those beings that are here for us, they, the main reason they're here is to help us to reach our potential. So, um, hey, Tracy, Karen, Melissa, Sharon, and Anne. So what we're going to be doing tonight is a grounding exercise, as usual. So this little grounding exercise, I think most people are getting used to this one. Um, but the reason for it is to help to keep our energy balanced. And... That's why I do this. That's why I do the work I do to help to help everyone um, that is growing spiritually, to help them to stay in balance for these, well, spasmodic energy times that we're in. Uh, there's so much going on, but we'll talk about that in a little bit more. So let's get this grounding exercise underway. So if you can find yourself a place to sit. Hey, Sarah. Um, uh, we've got Anita. Kylie, another Kylie, Karen. Um, so nice place to sit, get yourselves comfortable. And if you can close your eyes, hey Janelle. And as you sit there, just begin by taking a few nice deep full breaths. Knowing that those breaths in aren't just about taking in oxygen, they're also about taking in life force. So imagine with each breath in that you are literally taking in nice, clean, fresh energy from all around you. And what this energy is doing, it's helping to fill up your space with nice, bright, clear energy. More vibrancy, brighter colors, almost an effervescence as you begin to breathe this life force in. Hey, Karen. Hey, Janelle.
Okay, so now that you've got that breath running, the breath out is just as important as the breath in. So with this next deep breath in, I'd like you to pull that life force in. With the breath out, I want you to push that life force down through your body, your base chakra, your legs, your feet, and down into the earth. And just allow that to keep flowing. So with every breath you take, sounds like a song. Um, with every breath you take, then just visualize that same process. Breath in is taking in life force. The breath out is pushing that down through your body. Face chakra, legs, feet, and down into the earth. And you should start to feel tingling or warmth going down through your feet as it does flow down into the earth. So this connection to the earth is so important now. It helps to keep us stable when everything is so up and down, topsy-turvy, sideways, you name it. It's all over the place. We just have to keep our energy stable, and that's what this will help you with. All right, so now that you've got that flowing down through your feet, now taking another deep breath in, pulling that life force in again, this time with the breath out, push it right down to your earth chakra, which is the deepest chakra point we have, right down at the core of the earth. Yes, right down at the core of the earth. Our energy system is incredibly vast, much bigger than most people realize or understand. This earth chakra is our deepest connection to the earth that we have. So as you flow down from your base chakra, down through to that earth chakra, then you will have a nice, deep, strong connection to the earth. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Karen. So remembering, nice, deep breath in, pulling that life force in, then driving that life force right down to your earth chakra. And what this will do you keep this up, just keep that same way of breathing happening. You'll end up with a nice deep connection to that earth chakra. And how that will feel is, look, some people just get a knowing. Some people feel uh, effervescence or tingling all around them. Uh, some people just feel peace. But you'll know it when you connect with it. Couple more breaths doing that. And make that breath strong, you know, make noise when you're breathing in, when you breathe out. It actually helps to move energy. Okay. Now that you've got that connection, doing this on a repetitive basis every day will make that stronger and easier to get to, to connect with. But we're going to shift into a different gear now. So we're going to connect with the deepest part of our energy system, which is called your core star energy. But literally what it is, is the God force, whatever you think um, that energy of God is, or the creator, or great spirit, whatever your terminology is, um, it doesn't matter, it's all the same energy. So it's not just outside of us, it's inside of us. So as you dive your awareness into the center of your body to start with, hey Gina, so as you connect with the center of your physical, Knowing that we're far more than physical, we have such a depth to us, just like Doctor Who and the TARDIS. Most people know that series. Uh, we're like the TARDIS, so we have an incredible um, depth far beyond physical matter that goes, it's like a universe inside of us. So I'd like you to just keep diving deeper and deeper into that universe inside of you. And right at the center, is a light or a high vibrational energy source. When you can see it, feel it, or sense it, you 
then just set an intention to allow that to expand. So begin to expand that energy, that light. Imagine it rushing out from deep within your core, rushing out and filling your physical body to start with, with light. Imagine every cell in your body being filled with light. And if you could look under a microscope at each cell, each cell would be vibrating at a higher frequency. It could just be buzzing. So as your physical body begins to lift in vibration, now begin to expand that out beyond your physical into an area about three to four meters around you. And it shouldn't take long to fill that space. So literally what you're doing, you're connecting with up to around about your ninth energy body, which is taking in your galactic connection, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight. So as you fill that space, this is the active energy that you're functioning with right now. But still, we're far more than that. So what I'd like you to do next is on the count of three, I want you to just let that light explode out in all directions. And imagine nothing is missed. It expands out through time and space. So on the count of three, one, two, and three. Let it go. Just feel it rushing out through time and space. Beautiful. And just ex enjoy that expansive feeling. Excellent. So from there, just in for one minute, just enjoy that space. Know that your consciousness is spread out through the universe. But you have control of it. You're driving this with your intention. And what that expansiveness and that high vibrational en energy will do is to support your whole being to be in line with all of the changes that are going on energetically. That grounding exercise will support your connection to this earth. We can't get away from that while we're alive. We're here on this planet. If we're going to get the most of being here on this planet, then we need to be grounded. And that's what that base chakra and earth chakra connection is all about, getting the most out of our life. Sounds really simple, but it's actually very important. Cool, guys. So just to bring your awareness back, Please don't pull that light back. Keep your light expansive. Um, keep yourself grounded. But all I'm going to get you to do now is to just go back to the beginning with your breath. Just pulling in that nice clean energy. And then with the next breath in, visualizing that life force coming in with the breath out, pushing it down through your body your base chakra, your legs, your feet, and then down into the earth. Excellent, guys. I think we're back. cool -o. So I hope you enjoyed that because that's, um, that's a regular. So I do that probably sometimes if I'm, when I'm working with clients. I'll do that up to about five to eight times a day um, and it 
because I do it all the time, and this would be the same for you guys, if you're doing it all the time or when you need to, it will get quicker to happen. It won't take as long as we took tonight. It should only take about two minutes. I can do it in about 30 to 40 seconds because I do it all the time. So um, very powerful thing. Uh, hey, Karen. Thanks, Dear. hope this is correct. Yep. Hey, you're, you're here, Karen. All right. So subject for tonight is looking after our galactic self. So what we did last week, we talked about how to keep our energy system intact through all of these changes with, that we've been hit with lately. And we will continue to be hit with this. This stuff's not dying off. We have to get used to this. Um, this is something we have to adjust to because um, if we don't adjust to it now, it's going to hit us pretty hard down the track. So being more grounded is, is a really important thing. That helps to support our physical body, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies because our physical body is connected here to the earth. But it's also connected to the universe. And so it's important to make sure that we're grounded what that does then is to help us to be more open and, and our psychic abilities to be more open and stronger, but also to support all of the vibrational changes that are going on. Look, we've got DNA that's becoming active, that's waking up in this. Hey, Tanya. Um, thanks for that comment. Um, hey, Valme. Uh, so we've got... Um, DNA waking up inside us. We've got uh, our glands are doing flip flops with the because the glands are supporting this DNA activation that's going on. So our glands are going through a lot, and and a lot of people are, are being hit with um, different uh, physical ailments that they're going to the doctor for. They're going to get tests, and the doctor does tests and the te tests come back normal. This is because there's nothing actually wrong with you. It's, it's actually about the glands adjusting to all the changes that are going on vibrationally. So it's important to remember, hey Natasha, um, it's important to remember that it's not just physical, mental, emotional and spiritual anymore. Because that DNA is waking up and it's waking up in everyone. Yes, there are people out there that don't talk about anything of a galactic level and they don't want to probably, but whether they like it or not, these changes are happening within them. You can't stop this stuff. This is happening. Um, and so what the information I'm giving you guys tonight and last week is all about supporting these changes. So. Let's talk about what's going to help support our galactic um, energy system, which is the energy system. It's, it's interactive within um, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, which is in the first seven major energy bodies, including the physical. But the next two beyond that are the most active of our energy system beyond the the let's say the human aspect, which is those first seven energy bodies, um, the eighth and the ninth relate to our galactic connections, including that uh, galactic DNA that's waking up inside us. And look, this is a proven fact. Uh, you know, um, it may be a surprise to, to some of you guys, but it, it's been happening now for about, um, about 12 years that this has been going on. And... Um, and I felt the changes when they first kicked in. And, and fortunately, because of the connections I've got um, with a group of galactic beings that I've been working with for about the last 18 years, um, the information has been really strong and clear and everything that I've, that's been told to me has been happening. And it's showing up in the energy field too. When you see a person's aura, all of these changes are actually showing in the aura. And... Um, so, um, so for your galactic energy, those that it's not just the eighth and ninth energy body because everything is interactive within that whole process. Uh, this isn't just about a layer uh, to 
extra layers on top of the seventh energy body. This is actually about the whole package. Um, so first thing is higher vibrational foods and liquids. Um, so if we're going to keep up with the times with these changes, at some point we need to start looking at cleaning up our act more. And this is, this is a process that seems to be happening. And look, I'm going to put my hand up here uh, for something that happened has happened just recently. I'm a blood type O, which um, when you understand more about the different blood types, which we talked about last week, um, O blood type is basically we're carnivores. <laughs> Hate to say it to you vegetarians out there, but we it's just natural for, for O's to be... Um, uh, carnivores, not all the time, but, um, you know, we need that for our, our body type. But what's changing is just that. There's, because our bodies are raising in frequency, um, our, our bodies, not just our bodies, but our being is starting to reject certain foods that don't align with the frequency of the energy system anymore. So, in the old days, when our vibration was lower, it wasn't an issue. You know, we needed to eat meat. But what's happening now is our frequency raises, uh, more people are turning vegetarian. Now, that's that's kind of three quarters of the way happened with me. So for me, I've worked out that uh, I still like meat, but I don't like um, uh, badly treated uh, animals that have been processed. And the majority of animals that have been processed through abat abattoirs, you can pretty much count that they've got trauma in their in their energy system. And we're eating the meat is part of the energy system. It's just physical energy. And we're eating that stuff. And our body our bodies are rejecting that. But for those that um, are still in a, a state of needing meat, which I am to a degree, um, the only red meat that I eat these days, so I'm off chicken. Um, I used to think that I'd be eating chicken for the rest of my life, but I can't even eat chicken anymore. Um, I definitely don't eat uh, um, pork, um, and I don't eat steaks, as in cows. But what I will eat is um, kangaroo and uh, venison. So when you have a look at the meat, that the meat of kangaroo and venison compared to normal steak, there's so much more fatty tissue um, in, in um, uh, domesticated animals um, and that clogs up your whole energy system, your physical energy system, but also the whole spectrum of the energy system, including the galactic part. Now, with all this DNA that's waking up inside us, and we have a multitude of DNA within us that's been dormant dormant in humanity for millions of years. But what's happening now with this raising in frequency that's been going on for the last roughly 12 years, um, that's actually starting to wake up uh, that DNA that's been dormant. Uh, and scientists call this DNA rubbish DNA that serves no purpose. Well, there's a hell of a lot of it, and I've got to tell you, it's not uh, rubbish. It's, actually, it's becoming activated now. Um, and if uh, we've got time at the end of this, I'll go into a little bit more of that. Um, I have talked about this a lot over the last year and a half. Um, oh, Samantha's just asking a question. What about fish? At the moment, yeah, fish um, I am still eating, not as much, um, but I do eat fish, uh, tuna and salmon. Um, but my feeling is any fish is good, but the one thing you've got to watch out for is uh, with fish is where it's come from um, and the only way you can do that you can get told whatever you get told at, uh, where, where you buy it from but the one thing I've learned to do is as you focus on whatever you're seeing in behind the glass counter at any of that food that's in there at, a, at uh, even in a fruit shop um, as you focus on any one of, of those apples or pieces of fish um, or whatever it is, you'll get a feeling when you connect with it. Now, 
you need to trust your feelings on this because this is what will tell you whether that fish is good or bad. Um, and uh, Michaela's saying responsibly fished. Exactly. Um, it's, it's a hard one to know because, you know, with things like tuna, um, there's such a... Um, it's so used throughout the planet and there are these huge uh, uh, trawlers, deep sea trawlers that go out and it, it's, it's kind of rape and pillage, I hate to say. It's the best term I can use. So we need to be concerned with what we're eating so we can feel the energy of that. Um, and what's going to be happening down the track, um, if enough people start to change their diets, then those domesticated animals that are suddenly being rejected by our bodies, there'll be less and less of those killed. So uh, they won't be farming them so heavily, um, which when you look at uh, um, uh, third world countries like South America, uh, through the Asian countries where deforestation is a huge issue, why, the, why is deforestation a huge issue? Because they're cutting down trees to build houses, but also they're cutting down trees to run livestock. So if we don't eat the livestock, then we won't need to cut down more trees. Um, so this is a huge, huge thing that's, that's going to be affecting a whole lot of other areas on the planet as we change our diet. It's, it's hard to believe just how far changing your diet extends. So high vibrational foods and liquids. Now, I hope, I pray that there aren't too many people out there drinking tap water. Um, even um, even uh, water that says it's spring water, I highly suggest you do exactly the same thing I suggested before, which is to... Focus on that, even hold a bottle of water and just say whatever you feel is going on in that water. If, if you feel that that water doesn't, isn't right, then don't touch it. Um, buy something that does feel right. Um, I'm just going to go through a few uh, comments. Um, uh, is tuna okay? Again, look... Michaela's asking, is tuna okay? Um, it's, it's one of those things, like I said, you test your feelings with it. Um, sometimes I think it's best to buy fresh rather than tinned. Um, uh, Nikki, I ate steak for the first time in years last week. It wouldn't move, digest, never again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, I found that with a game meat, um, like venison and um, kangaroo, as long as you eat smaller pieces, it digests much better, um, but also don't have as much. You know, you don't need as much. It's really high in protein, which is great to, for energy in the body uh, and incredibly low on fat. Uh, so it doesn't clog, clog up the body, um, doesn't clog up arteries, and um, it's actually really good. So... Um, Purified water. Purified water is good. So, yeah, filtered water. Uh, there's some great filtering systems out there. Um, make sure it's a good one and it's not. It's filtering as much as possible. Uh, so where do you get kangaroo and venison from? Um, what water systems do you have? Um, so I've just got um, uh, under, the ta under the sink uh, filter. Unfortunately, I live in a... Um, a rental, but um, uh, a lot of spring water, if you can get quality spring water, you shouldn't need to filter it, but it's still a good idea to filter it if, if you can. Um, the venison, uh, so Samantha, are you in Adelaide? Um, that, that's the question. When What you can do is normally there'll be someone, um, central markets in Adelaide, uh, there's uh, a guy that um, is down there that has game meats. Um, so he's there on the weekends um, and uh, it's, it's pretty good quality meat. I've had a look at it. I've felt the energy of it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's great. 
So that's the only place at the moment I've bought it from. Um, and Brendan Taylor, liver and spices is my go-to. Um, it's the highest nutrients profile. I also juice fresh vegetables, but find that's hard on my liver. And sometimes you just need to tweak exactly what what vegetables that you're juicing. Um, and my suggestion would be to see a naturopath um, or get a bit of information from someone who specializes in that sort of thing. And there are people out there um, that are, are well educated on that stuff. Um, so Dare's saying we get our water from a dispenser in Capella Bar and it's really easy to drink and feels light if that's if that's a thing yeah no if it feels light it means it's it's high vibrational it's good quality and hey paul good to hear you see you there growing your own food is best paul is the man this man is incredible whatever he puts his hand to grows like magic and grows huge so when you grow your own food um, and i'm going to get to this one in a sec it's a really important one to to be because you're putting your energy your love into that growing that food but what that does to the quality of food that what you get in the in the end is just absolutely fantastic is filtered rainwater for home tank okay it is as long as it's heavily filtered because unfortunately um you know, there's a lot of pollution out there. It may not be all that visible, but it is also, I mean, we can get into the complications of chemtrails and uh, all of those other nasties that are in the air. So it, it does need to be heavily filtered if it's rainwater, um, but it's definitely better than mains water because they're, they're putting stuff in mains water um, that you just don't want to know about. It's not just fluoride. There are other chemicals they're putting in there too. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Hey, Roz. Uh, g'day, everyone. Just popped in to say hi, but need to go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello, goodbye. Um, uh, 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 hey, Kathy. Uh, is filtered rainwater from Home Tank okay? Oh, we've had that one before. Yep. So, um, all right. Let's go on with the next step. We only got to foods and liquids then. Um, so, look, one of the, as far as liquids go, uh, one of the big ones is going to be alcohol. Look, I'm not completely off alcohol. Um, I still like a, a, a glass of red every now and then. Um, but, you know, I, I can tell, I, I just know in my body that um, eventually, um, don't know when, but um, um, I know I'll be getting off that too. So as you get off these these and coffee too. Coffee is another one that can be toxic if you have too much of it. Um, so our bodies are just going to be really running the show. You know, you can, if you're, if you feel that, um, you know, you're still connected to maybe the odd red every now and then, um, or coffee, I wouldn't be pushing it too hard to, to try and get off it because you just end up, end up with an internal battle, but your body will just begin to reject. And, you know, I've heard about it with with the meat thing, but I, it's hit me now, and I I couldn't believe how quickly it came in. It wasn't like a, a long process; it just went bang, and I just I just can't eat red meat uh, except for game meat. So, um, big thing they were telling me. This is the gang upstairs were, were telling me, do your best to remove processed food from your diet. So anything that's processed, you don't know exactly what's in it. You're only being, you're only trusting what's being put on the label. And the more food is processed, the less quality that there is in the food. So that's an important one. And as um, Paul said before, homegrown foods, because you've got total control, maybe you can't control fully what's in the soil, but you can get the soil tested to see how good a quality the soil is. You can get soil brought in. Um, and so that's, then you've got a bit of control over what the plants are actually growing in. Um, and so once you've got that under control, 
then your love, your energy goes into those foods you're growing and just think what you're getting in return. You're getting such better quality foods. Um, now, look, this is a big thing because I know a lot of people out there uh, don't have the time or maybe they don't have a green thumb uh, for growing their own foods. But this is where community mindedness starts to come in. So we need to start thinking out of the the uh, square, out of the box, because, you know, we're so used to going and accept that we need to go to uh, a produce store to get food, to get uh, vegetables and fruit. When in fact, there are actually people out there in our community that are growing this stuff and growing it well. Um, and what do you have to trade for that? Maybe you could do some deal. Um, instead of money, or you could be paying them money as well, but um, maybe you could trade with them something that you do. Maybe you're a practitioner, you're a healer, um, and um, you could trade a healing session for that or a massage session. Um, wouldn't that be great? Um, this, is, this is the way we start to do without money, um, is through trading. Um, so you just don't know what qualities you have that could be needed. Sometimes we we kind of accept the qualities we have, but we don't think about that other people may, may get an advantage from those qualities. Um, and sugar, Kylie says, yes, definitely. Sugar is another one that our bodies are going to be definitely rejecting. Um, Anne's going, I need coffee. Yeah, look, I do too sometimes. Um, I haven't outgrown coffee yet, uh, but I have... I have certainly cut it down. Um, uh, they're saying I am growing my own greens and herbs on my houseboat. Fantastic. Um, so also part of a food cooperative that buys organic and local and seasonal foods. It's brilliant. Exactly. Now, this is the community stuff that's really important to start getting involved in. Uh, Kathy's lots says lots of community gardens and grow free carts used for trading. Yeah, they look in the Adelaide Hills, they're all over the place. And I believe there's some down in town too. So Christina, for a long time, I've wanted to learn making spice rubs for from the ground up. There'll be someone out there that knows how to, I'm sure you've just got to really find them. Um, it's always good face to face, but there'll definitely be someone online. Um, and Tracy's saying, yeah, absolutely trading my healing services. Well, Look, I do this um, as well. I've started trading my uh, services for, for things too. So it works, it functions. And you know what? It also brings everyone on an even keel on, you know, everyone's equal. They've just got different qualities. That's what makes them different. Um, so another thing that came in um, that was interesting is making sure you've got good gut health. Um, and this is where you may need to get the help of a naturopath or a homeopath or um, herbal doctor. Um, but um, yeah, having a good gut health because everything centers from the gut. So if your gut health is good, then your body should be running at a high frequency all by itself. Um, so that's an important aspect. Uh, so also actively lifting your frequency through meditation now i just took you through something just before so that uh, course energy part of the grounding exercise that helps to lift your vibration which then also supports changes in your dietary needs so um, it reinforces um, when your body is saying okay i'm done with meat the more you actively work with opening up that core star energy on a regular basis, then that helps to support your physical body and the processes because, you know, your body's been used to having, if you're a meat eater and you've been eating domesticated meats, um, your body's been used to that. So sometimes it needs a bit of help as you're going through that process. And that's when that um, uh, opening up that core star energy will do that. But if, make sure you do your grounding as well. That really helps. So, uh, Petra, hey Petra, a roasted dandelion is a great coffee alternative. Thanks. Yeah, I've actually I've got some in the cupboard, 
a uh, friend of mine uh, put some in there. I've just got to try it. So you can see I'm addicted to coffee still. So, <laughs> and I won't say addicted. I just like, I, just, I actually like the taste of coffee. Um, I'm not trying to backpedal because I, I have at times done without coffee for about a week and then I've gone back to it. Um, but hey, it'll happen when it happens. So Trina's saying, I stopped eating red meat just over a year ago. Uh, I woke up one morning and I didn't want, want to eat it anymore. Even the thought of my favorite go-tos, I no longer wanted and wasn't sure why. It all makes sense now. Yeah, and look, I was exactly the same way, Trina. It just seemed to happen overnight. I think what helped, I know this sounds silly, but the next door neighbor was away and she asked me to, if I could look after her chickens for um, a couple of weeks. And, you know, I'm in there, um, you know, feeding the chickens and letting them out into the yard from their, their little pen and, and, you know, one of the chickens and then both of the chickens started doing the same thing. They actually just squat on the ground because what they wanted to do was be patted. And I'd never actually stopped and patted a chicken before. I think that actually pushed, pushed me to the point where I just, that's when I didn't want to eat chickens. <laughs> After I started getting a, uh, an actual emotional connection with, with these two. So um, there you go. That, that was my, so all you guys want to get an emotional uh, connection with a chicken, go to a farm, pat a chicken. You'll go off chicken for good. Um, uh, so Karen's saying a neighbor puts a basket in, on a front fence. Yep, we can add or take as needed. It's a lovely feeling adding and a bonus to take it if it's, if it's useful. Exactly. And um, someone else said that, that there's these little stalls that are just popping up all over the place with people leaving food in them. Um, Petra, I've really been looking at community lately and making a good one where I live. Yeah. And you just don't know. See, you know, one of the biggest problems with, with the suburbs is everyone keeps to themselves. They have these tall fences and no one talks to anyone. And it's really, it's up to us to start to change that. You know, if we want change, we need to be that change. So, um, you know, it's important to communicate uh, with people and see what they're doing, you know, see how they are. Um, and uh, I drop in on the neighbour because she's on her own and um, I just drop in there occasionally just to see if she's okay. And, um, you know, it's just it's it's just good. You don't want to be in each, in, in each other's pockets, but it's important just to drop in and make sure, you know, everyone's all right. So, um, you know, we're here, this is... This isn't about being the lone wolf thing anymore. It's about um, caring for people. You know, if we're going to change, change humanity, if we want humanity to change rather, we need to be that change. So, uh, so it is saying uh, we have, yeah, we have the best community on, on the little island there. Um, my daughter's chickens are like family. Haha. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so Trina's back. Maybe what, that is what I need to do for my next step. I need to friend some chickens. <laughs> Highly suggest it. Um, it'll do you wonders. Um, so Gina's saying, yes, we have chickens and ducks and they're absolutely beautiful. Chickens do love their pats and ducks love to have a great conversation with you. Yeah, um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, Karen, walking a pet is a magnet for people to initiate a chat. Yeah, I've, I've actually seen ducks being walked, believe it or not. Uh, it's quite funny. All right, back on track. Um, so we talked about gut health. We talked about uh, actively lifting your frequency through meditation or through that guided exercise I showed you, including uh, working on your grounding. Because, you know, we can be talking about as much out there as possible, but we need to be also talking about the basics, which is grounding. You know, all of the stuff I talked about last week about physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, this is kind of the next step up. But we still need to be, if you imagine, um, you know, a game of chess, a multi-level game of chess. It's one big game, but each each game, each, sorry, each level within the game are smaller games. And so to really um, 
to really win at the whole game, you've got to support each one of those tiers uh, of the games. Um, so it's important that grounding helps you to be in your body and feel more. So that's one big thing uh, that grounding helps you with, um, which means your awareness levels are much more open, your sensory abilities are much more open, and then that's when you can go to the fruit and veg store if you don't have someone to trade with, um, and you can sense which are the best apples or which are the best mandarins or which are the best carrots to buy. And if they don't have high vibrational carrots or, or apples, go somewhere that does. You know, it's all about choice. In the Adelaide Hills, there's a great shed. If no one, um, anyone from the Adelaide Hills is listening in, um, it's called the Green Shed. It's uh, just out from um, Gumaraka. And uh, it's a great place. And it's mostly all local produce. Um, mostly all organic and really good quality and highly suggest going there. But there'll be other places in other states and other towns that are, are like this. So, um, you know, it's important to source them out. Um, all right. This is, this is where we go into a slightly different uh, area. So staying away from game players. And I think you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who play games with you who are very low vibrational, who uh, talk a lot of rubbish and never goes anywhere. I'm being hard, I know. But if it's anything to do with being judgmental and having a go at people, you just don't want to be around that. Again, if we want humanity to change and to lift its vibration, then supporting that doesn't work. We need to let go of people that carry on like that that's the only way that they will learn that it's not, not acceptable. Um, so hanging around with people like that lowers your vibration. So if you want to support these aspects of you, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and galactically, um, you know, you need to be living in a way that will support that, including the way you communicate, uh, the way you... Um, you know, working on judgment and working on being reactive. You know, the last thing you want to be doing is being reactive all the time. The more grounded you are, the higher your frequency, you actually stop being reactive. It's actually part of the process. Um, so just a couple more statements, uh, messages from people. Um, uh, Nikki Renee, grounding, listening to my body, the emotional components related to my chronic pain has been life changing. Exactly. You, you learn to be, to be able to read your body better than um, a doctor or a, a CAT scan can do. Um, yep, that's the one I dare, the green shed. It's a great place. Um, so I find that people who are not vibing at a similar level tend to remove themselves anyway. That's exactly right. Uh, and um, it's generally, you know, if you've been on the spiritual path a, a little while, you find that most of those people have kind of um, left your space. Uh, but every now and then, you know, they, people will come in. You may revisit someone you haven't seen for a long time. And it's, it probably will become very clear fairly quickly that, the two of you don't gel anymore. So it kind of sorts itself out. Um, but yeah, it's important to state where you're at, you know, and um, what you, you won't accept too, because uh, that game playing stuff just brings you down. Um, that's the last thing we want. So the other thing is um, every now and then going into a space that's very high vibrational, like uh, a forest or like a beach, but make it somewhere that not a lot of people go to. You know how you see, you know, on a good Sunday, there's lots of people walking along the beach. That's okay, but maybe find somewhere a little bit off the beaten track um, that not too many people go, where the energy is cleaner, it's fresher. Um, and... Um, you know, forests are a great one for that. You know, go 
for those of you up north where there's rainforest, I love rainforest because it's really high vibrational uh, places. Um, but any forest can be, even out in the middle of the Flinders ranges where there isn't a lot of trees, that can be high vibrational too. Um, and look, this kind of leads me into something else. Even high mountain, you know, mountain ranges, particularly down the east coast of Australia, I've walked some of the Great Dividing Range and uh, there's some absolutely beautiful spots up there um, and, uh, you know, great places to take to take friends um, and, uh, and take the kids, help them to feel this stuff. Uh, look, one of the greatest places for anyone living northern New South Wales is you've got to do the walk up to the top of Mount Warning. The Mount Warning is the highest point on the east coast. It's where the sun hits the first. as It's the first place in Australia the sun hits right at the top of the mountain. And um, there's a big platform up there. Um, and uh, the walk up there, it's, it's about a three hour walk, but it's a fantastic place to be. Very high vibrational. Now, why I'm suggesting this, besides it's a good place to go anyway, is if we're going to be, if we're already in this state of activation of our galactic um, senses and our galactic um, energy, then there's we're not far away um, i mean i do it all the time but we're not most people that are activating their their um you know doing the right thing by their bodies and by their emotions their, their mental faculties uh, spiritually they're doing they're actively doing things and when you start actually stepping into this galactic aspect of us you're not that far away from being able to communicate with these beings. So if you go to high vibrational places, you will be able to because your energy will be heightened, your senses will be more open. And I've got to tell you, there's a lot of portals throughout um, forests and on mountain, in mountains and uh, um, in, in certain places that are a little bit out of the way. Those places are fantastic to go to, um, to actually connect with beings. There's lots of uh, portals up here in Mount Crawford Forest in the Adelaide Hills. I've never seen so many. Um, and it's, it's just amazing the connections I've made in the forest. Um, I've, I've said in the past, I've seen two, physically seen two different types of um, galactic beings now and and this is on the level you know you don't have to believe me but i've seen them physically so um and the portals is what they they transport themselves through not just from one aspect of this planet to another part of the, the planet but from off world to this planet so um and it's great places to connect with these beings. So um, have a think about that one. Um, and if anyone wants to know anything more about how to do that, then give me a ring. I'm happy to help out. Um, and so Natasha's come in. I've noticed lately I haven't been reacting as much, taking my time and dealing with things in a better way. That's cool. That's great. And that's all, you know, it's a natural part of raising your frequency and just going along with everything that's happening. So being honest and speaking my truth, exactly. Um, setting boundaries, fantastic. That's another thing that uh, empaths really need. But it seems to be one of those things that, again, is naturally happening. Um, and yeah, seawater is very cleansing. Thanks, Adair. Um, you're right in the middle of it where you are on a houseboat. Um, so uh, great place. Um, Anita, hey, Anita. I love walking up Mount Warning. There you go. Someone that understands me. Um, Mount Warning is on my bucket list. It's a great place. It's not that far away. Um, so Gina's saying Mount Crawford Forest has an amazing feel when you walk deep into that area. And I'll give you a reason why, Gina. Um, <clears throat> so I just happen to know one of the, the head rangers up there. And um, he said to me that... Uh, there's crystalline energy right throughout Mount Crawford Forest. And that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of portals out there. 
um, because the and that's why people are drawn to Mount Crawford forests more so than Kaipo because of that crystalline energy and it's really high vibrational out there and there's a lot of a lot of interesting things to see out there. Um, so Karen's in Saturday in Mount Crawford on the weekend. Awesome, <laughs> you've got a plan. Good to have a plan. All right, so what do we got down here? Um, so going to high vibrational places. Um, look, the other thing is, you know, all of you guys that are on the line here, you obviously know quite a lot. You know, you're learning, you're growing, and you've got a lot of information in you about uh, how to live a better life and how to um, eat better foods. And um, so be a teacher. You know, when people ask, don't hold back and let them know what you know about, uh, you know, eating better and, and uh, vegetarian versus being a, a carnivore and, um, you know, be, be creators of, of um, information. And, uh, and what that does, it helps to co-create a lot of amazing things. Uh, community is all about co-creation and about uh, working together on projects. Um, you meet some really fantastic people out there when, when you start to go to the right places. And, you know, some of these out-of-the-way places, they, they're the ones. They're the places to meet some really unusual and interesting people. And um, because that's where they go. Um, they don't like going around where there's millions of other people. They want to go to these special places. So find those special places um, and you'll, you'll connect with the right people. Um, so think about... Think more about communities, you know, how important communities are going to be in the future. You know, like I said before, we, we've learnt to shut ourselves off from people, you know, with big fences. Um, but it's, it's time to actually uh, communicate more with people and see where their strengths are and start to work in with them. Um, and, and this will eventually, and I don't mean it has to be your next door neighbor, um, it might be, but it can be someone in the next suburb or in the next town. And, uh, you know, that can still be community. It's a, you're only a phone call away from them and you can do trading and you can make some great friends that way too. Um, again, you're surrounding yourselves with similar like-minded, higher vibrational people. And this is what will um, perpetuate growth. Because as you grow, they grow, and it just you just bounce energy off each other, and it's just fantastic. So one thing <laughs> the galactic beings that work with me um, were saying, and this is a saying that goes back a long way, be a part of the solution, not the problem. So we have the power, with knowledge, we have the power to create solutions on this planet. And... There's no time like the present to put this into action. You know, it's highly needed. Um, so um, it's important to, with, with community, is to learn to interact with different groups. The first group you find might not be the right one for you. It could be just a fact that you need to keep looking and you'll eventually find the right people to hang around with. It, it's it's that spiritual family that we're all looking for. And um, I tell you what, as you grow and as you change and as you keep engaging with, you know, grounding and opening up your core star energy and just doing high vibe things, then you naturally attract high vibe people. And this is what we're all here for. Um, so Dare's saying, I, we did a forest walk in October. Yeah, we did. And we went out to where the portals are. It was a fabulous experience. I'd highly recommend you get you get one a walk. Oh, get a walk in with Matthew if you get a chance. So I have been actually thinking about getting that walk happening again. I haven't done one since that time. So what we did last time was, uh, uh, I think we ended up with a group of about twenty people, and I took the group into Mount Crawford Forest. It's not a big walk. Um, 
it's probably about uh, half an hour in, um, half hour back, and uh, took you to some of the took people to some of the portals that I know where beings are, and um, so let's maybe create this one again. Um, by next week, I'll have a date for you. How's that? All right. So just to finish off, um, I'd like to just tell you a little bit about what's coming up. Uh, so upcoming workshops. Um, we have, uh, we did the last meditation in the teepee, just gone. Uh, but we have a drumming circle in the teepee on June 11th. Uh, so this is at Riverdale Spiritual Center. Um, we have shamanism level one down at Infinite Flow at Christie's Beach in Adelaide. Uh, and uh, nice spot down there. We also have a free uh, free talk coming up on the 18th. You can see that uh, this is down Holden Hill Way. Um, and um, that can be seen on the Greenwood Spiritual Journey, Matthew Greenwood Spiritual Journeys Facebook site. And we've got another shamanism level one on the 31st of July and the 1st of August uh, at Riverdale. The one at Christie's Beach was on the 12th and 13th of June. And uh, we have a smudging workshop on the 15th of August. And that's at my place. But what we also have is I am going to be up in Queensland for the first couple of weeks of July. And I was just going to give you a little bit of information on that. So I'm going to be working mostly from a shop at Capalaba uh, called Elemental Connection. Really looking forward to meeting the guys. It looks like a great shop. And uh, um, so I'm going to be doing a free talk on Friday the 2nd of July. Uh, I'm going to be doing a Shamanism Level 1 course on the 3rd and the 4th of July there. Um, I'll be also at the Logan Spiritual Center uh on monday the 5th that's in the evening i've got a busy time um i'm going to be doing a spirit guide night so talking about spirit guides and giving giving um, a bit of a demo on that on uh the night of tuesday the 6th i'll be running a meditation at elemental connections at on wednesday the 7th and I'm going to be doing a galactic talk on Friday the 9th at Elemental Connections. So then I've got another galactic and personal growth talk at Victoria Port Spiritual Centre. And believe it or not, I have a day off then. <laughs> so I'll be doing one-on-ones too. I'll be doing uh, deep emotional clearing and um, readings as well. So... Um, Oh, we've got a little bit of information coming through. Yep, I'm heading north of there. <laughs> I want to see this uh, um, houseboat. That's what I want to see. Um, so cool, guys. Thanks very much for being a part of tonight. If you need to um, need any help with your spiritual growth, that's what I do. I'm not just here to do talks. Um, so I do readings for people. That entails... Um, really passing on messages from your guides and also from galactic beings that are around you. Um, and um, the main work I do is helping people to clear out old emotional baggage and particularly suppressed energy that, that they're not even aware of is there. So that then frees you up to live your life the way you want to live it, not the way, um, not in regards to the energy that you've uh, taken on from other people. So, um, so look, thanks again, guys. Uh, it's been a great night and really loved all the questions. That's what makes the night. So you have a safe week and uh, we'll talk next week. Bye for now.